good morning one and all it's very it's very early in the morning from when i'm recording this as well um and it looks like i'm recording it from geo's house i'm not i'm absolutely not um i just wanted to really tackle a couple of the questions that arose from yesterday's video that i did which was pretty much i'm looking forward to the season i think we'll finish sort of top 10 i think we'll sign some players i, I don't feel that we're going to sign nobody and get relegated i'm excited i'm looking forward to it looking forward to seeing antonio and so on and so forth that's what i said but there were enough comments on the video afterwards for me to for me to perhaps you know address a couple of bits and think and oh, maybe i didn't make my point quite uh quite well enough and it was really a comment from somebody who and you have to excuse me because i'm not actually at home at the moment so i don't have the the ability to pop the comments up and that sort of thing so we're a bit we're a bit basic we're a bit very basic at the moment we're um we're rubbing two sticks together put it that way in terms of in a video sense um what i what the comment was was it suggested it's not that they're not looking forward to the season it's not that they think we'll get relegated or they think we won't sign anyone it just said it feels that it's an opportunity squandered that actually last season was so good now was the time to capitalize on that and continue to build and and that's a great point i really do think it's a great point and i'm not even saying i don't think we'll sign anyone i do think we'll do because you can't stand still so if you stand still then you know you're going backwards because everybody else is going to improve as we've discussed i do think we had a comment from a leeds fan in the comments yesterday and they were making a the point that they're going to do better next season they're going to sign players and Elland road will be a factor which it wasn't um, so there's going to be other teams. Like, I actually do expect Leeds to have a very, very good season. So you can't stand still. You've got to continue to improve. I think we will do that. But I think there's there's an element where the owners don't really help themselves. And I'll, what feeds into that is the Vladimir Souffal rumour, leak, whatever it is. If you've not seen the story, it basically suggests that Souffal isn't happy because he feels he's been made a derisory offer by West Ham. He's contracted in 2023, but it, we we want to give, we're in talks with him to give him a new deal, and he's looking at it and thinking, really, is that as good as it gets? I was one of your star players, which he was, by the way. Had he been at West Ham all year, possibly with a one hammer of the year, I think it's fair to say, uh, to say that. Um, anyway, it's just bad press, and it doesn't help. And I just think sometimes you've got to play the game a little bit. Um, now, I think the ownership. <sighs> Sometimes they feel. Sometimes it's like they're a little bit detached. Look, last season. I'll get back to Super in a second. Last season was an excellent season, but I, I think there is an element of it that it was in spite of the ownership, rather than because of it. You can't claim wisdom in hiring David Moyes when you've already sacked him once. So, what what had happened was, you know this. They had David Moyes. David Moyes kept us up. Kept us up from relegation. Decided to go a different way, decided to go the way of Pellegrini. So basically, did they decide David Moyes was the man for them? Yes. And then they decided he wasn't. At that point, they've let him go. And to a certain extent, both parties, both David Moyes and David Sullivan, had to come back with a towel between their legs and say, actually, this may well be the um, the marriage that's beneficial to both of us in that sense. But so I, I take look, last season was great. It really, really was. But. I think had had things have not mucked up under Pellegrini, we wouldn't have had David Moyes. We probably wouldn't have had that season. When you look at that reign over Pellegrini, and I do think Pellegrini's to blame for some of it. I think the scouting, I think the whole Husserlos thing is to blame for it. Um, but a lot of money was wasted. And so I think a large part of, of David Moyes and last season was accidental. But you also have to give credit in some ways for saying, all right, you know, you admitted you were wrong, you've gone back. And got him again but at that point you have to back him you, you absolutely do have to back him and i'm not saying it won't happen i think it might and as was discussed in the video yesterday probably our best signing of the season has been david moyes uh, I've, I've done the i've done the, the subject enough times to suggest that you know i think it is a good thing i think everton wanted him and the fact that he's signed with us means he is gonna be supported but you know it does it does seem to drag a bit that doesn't detract from my um from my looking forward to the season but sometimes the ownership are not aware of of their own pr in this sense um take the ticketing fiasco <clears throat> excuse me take the ticketing fiasco for instance which was the season ticket thing about them being not having a hard copy of a season ticket 
issued with a new season ticket for every game. It's going to make it really difficult for people. If you can't suss it out, you're going to have to pretty much queue in the rain at the ticket office on the match day. Um, bad decision. Bad PR. But as far as I understand it, it was sort of the ticket, the ticketing department and, and a completely different department that made this decision. Golden Sullivan weren't sat there rubbing their hands thinking we're going to make this terrible decision. As I understand it, they, they heard about it quite late. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets reversed now. Don't know, got no insider information. But it's it's the ownership being de being detached. And then people making a PR gaffe. And this Vladimir Supel is a PR gaffe. Because you just wonder, why isn't somebody... Look, he, he warrants a new deal. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not saying pay him what he wants. Do I think we should go up there and, and make him the highest earner at the club or give him 200 grand a week? No. We should be amongst it, right? I mean, he is one of the... If, if you had to write a list of, of West Ham's top five players, you, he would probably be in there, right? You'd say Vladimir Sufal was one of those top five players. Um, if he is, then pay him as one of the top five players. But what you don't want to do is let it get into a situation where it's leaked in the press. I don't think our owners have leaked it or our club have leaked it. It's, it's very much if you read the story. So I'm looking down the extra stories down there. Um... If you leak, the story's been leaked, it's very much a case of Supal's not happy, he's been made an offer, it ain't good enough. Clearly it's been leaked from his side. But cut that off at the pass, don't let it happen. I would suggest, I don't know about these transfer negotiations, or sorry, wage negotiations or whatever, I'd imagine it's not the first offer. So I would imagine, because you have to read between the lines because you have no information, so I'd imagine he was made an offer, he said, no, that's not good enough, we come back for a second one, we come back for a third one, and incrementally... It's just not very good. They're just not very good offers at all. And I think it appears that by the third or the fourth offer, he's probably thinking, well, hold on a second. This is just this is just no good. I don't... He doesn't feel that he's being treated like a regular top-notch first-team player. Apparently, the, the wages are, um, are ratcheted towards appearances and bonuses and things like that. He wants a good basic... You can understand that. And the funny thing is, I absolutely get the um, the bonus one, the appearances. I think for some people it's completely necessary. I think, take Andy Carroll. I think Andy Carroll, that was a, a really bad mistake. We signed Andy Carroll when he was injured. That, that should have been, his wages should have been based on appearances and goals. We just gave him a really, really big basic wage. Mistake. Jack Wilshire, you see where I'm going here. It's not just injury-prone players. I think with inconsistent players, you give them, you give them the incentive. You give them, you you give them the goal bonus. You give them the assist bonus because it gets them playing. Uh, why do you do that? Well, because the monetary value of the contract enables them to be motivated. Some players don't need motivating. I think Soufal is certainly one of those. I just don't think he needs it. I think he's going to give 100% every game. He's a, a warrior. You've seen him. He, he, he makes the tackle. He snarls at him and says something. Um, I guess I guess unpleasant. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but he said whatever. He tees them, winds them up. Um, he's fully committed. He's a fully committed player. I think you can just give him the, give him the basic wage without worrying that he's going to He's going to tail off that his, his performances are going to dip. I just don't think it's in his nature. He's also 28. He's not going to suddenly change now. That's just the way. That's the player he is. That's the person he is. But a look at, at what. How he sort of lurched from another PI to PR disaster. And this was really, really the point of it. Um, there should be enough realisation and enough knowledge within the ownership at the moment to know that I think they got, they got off of it a little bit. So I think there was a bit of a perfect storm. I think. My point is, I think they hired David Moyes accidentally because the other one didn't work out. Okay, that worked out from great. I also think there were a load of protests, and the protests got thwarted because of COVID. So I think they've been fortunate in two, in two matters there, which has actually given them a little bit of breathing space. And I think if you get that breathing space, you think, okay, well let's let's make, let's try and use this time to to build some bridges. Let's sort of build some bridges with the fans. Let's get our and let's just get our PR right. Let's support the manager and let's make it look like we're doing the right thing and that's it i, I think it's, it seems relatively simple but for them to lurch into this ticketing fiasco which was it's not like it hit them like a brick wall it, it was clear there was enough in the in i say the press the west ham the west ham press if, if you like 
in the build up to that to say that actually we're not happy with this the fans don't want this we don't want this this is a bad idea it was enough for them just it's almost like they'd set themselves on on a course and no matter what additional information that they were being told to divert from it they carried on on that course until until it crashed basically I just think, okay, look, that's, that's bad PR. Why, why damage something when you've been afforded an opportunity because of David Moyes and because of because of COVID and, and no fans being around and no protests? You've been given an opportunity to try and repair things and make things better. Why, why do, why do a car crash? Why do that? And then for this with with Sue Fowl, um, why isn't someone there sort of gauging and saying, well, actually, this guy's not happy. OK, this could blow up in our face. Why, why, why do the people at the club not know how popular this player is? Because he's very popular. He's going to be a cult hero. You, you know what I'm saying. He's going to be a James Collins, right? I've got that. I do have that right, don't I? Um, I think he's, I think it's a massive, massive mistake. Sorry. Car. I don't know why I'm saying sorry. It's not my car. I'm saying sorry because of the sound. That beautiful sound of car on gravel. Um, look, they just seem to launch, lurch from one mistake to the next. Um, they need to get it sorted out because what it does, it makes it, and going back to my original point, it, it, it just gives another bit of ammunition to, to, to not be excited for the season, to think, well, hold on, I was looking forward to it, but why, why, are we, why can't we just get everything right? Why can't we just, for once... For once, get get all get all that ducks lined up, you know. This thing is it's absolutely crazy, really. And the ridiculous thing about all this is, you know, and I know, that Superman will get a new contract. We know Superman wants to stay. We know that we want to keep Superman. We all know he's one of our best players. So why play the game? Why play the game? Why not just go in there and say, Vladimir, we're really pleased with what you've done. We're going to make you. We're going to. Whatever, the top tier, there'll be a top tier. We're going to put you in the top tier of players. It's as simple as that. Cut all this off at the pass. Plain and simple. Anyway, I'll be back tomorrow. Back from Joe's room. Have a very, very good day. <laughs>